Hello friends and welcome to my review of the Fuji Instax Mini 90. Okay, and the reason I bought the Mini 90 as opposed to the Mini 8 is there's a little more flexibility with the 90. Okay, so let me show you the primary reasons here on this camera. I'll show you there's a tripod socket here. Okay, you have a tripod socket and you also like on your uh, high-end DSLRs you have a shutter button for a landscape orientation. Then you also have another shutter button here for the when you're in port when you're in portrait orientation. Okay, so and then the film comes out here in this slot, and I'll fire it up and show you some of the other. Okay, so you can see this is that the lens extended, and I'll show you some of the modes. Okay, so we have macro here. This is a, a light to make the image lighter and darker. This button here. Uh, self timer turn the flash on and off and these are the different modes I'll walk you through the modes real quick here so this is a party mode this is a youth child mode it's just a faster shutter because the kids are running around so you just get a faster shutter I read the uh, the instructions the user guide the party mode the one I just came from was it'll flash and, and it'll uh, Basically, it'll try to catch a little more ambient, and so it'll leave the shutter open a little bit longer, right? So, it, so sometimes you, it looks like when you take a picture using a flash, it looks like you're in a cave because the aperture is too small. The flash fires, and it doesn't catch anything in the background. It doesn't catch any ambient. So what the, the purpose of the, the party mode is to leave the shutter open just a little bit longer. Okay, so we're back to youth, which is the faster shutter, so you can uh, isolate the movement of children. Uh, landscape landscape is it should stop down right uh, in you know obviously in serious photography you're gonna shoot in landscape it's about f16 or so and with a, a slower shutter so this I would hope it's doing the same thing it's a smaller aperture and a longer shutter speed let's go to the next one is double exposure so if you want to get artistic you can take uh, two images so you press the shutter and then recompose and take you know put it on something else and then you get this artistic a double exposure mode and the next one is bulb okay so bulb means you press the shutter you press the shutter here or the the front shutter and you can leave it open one second two seconds three seconds I don't know what the maximum but I think in the user guide I don't even want to guess because that would do you no justice but you can you can leave it open a sufficient amount of time to get like a a nightscape you're in the city and you want to capture tall buildings and stuff and they're illuminated you can go ahead and use bulb mode okay so that means obviously the flash will not fire and this tells you how many exposures remain each each cassette has 10 so I have four images remaining in this cassette okay so I'll go ahead and power it down show you what it looks like powered down so you can see it just retracts and this is the brown I got the brown because it's a little more retro and plus the those leatherette type uh, cases you can get uh, they're also brown so it would, it would match quite nicely and I'm just thrilled to death with this camera I just love it went out this morning on Fort Bliss and took a bunch of images so I'll show you the images now okay so let's start with the first one let me come in my camera's gonna shake a little bit I ask for your patience let me stabilize the boom arm on my C stand here Okay, so this is uh, the division headquarters. This is 1st Armored Division. Now, there's only one tank division left in the Army, and it's it's 1st Armored, and that's headquartered here at Fort Bliss, Texas. And this is a new headquarters they built, maybe 08, somewhere in there. This is a very recent building, but this is the 1 AD headquarters. So what happened is, and I'll tell you, the, I'll give you the backstory real quick. I didn't know how long it took for these two to develop. So I took the image and I waited about 30 seconds or a minute or so, and it was uh, overexposed. So I, I took another image, but what I didn't realize is I just didn't give it enough time to expose properly, to develop, I should say. So when you take an image, make sure you give it about three or four minutes, maybe even more, because the, the process is really slow. So if if you, my point is, is if you look at the image after about a minute or two, you're gonna think, oh gosh, I, I overexposed the image. And I'm going to put it on darken and take another one. So that's what I did. And so let me show you. I didn't give enough time to expose properly. Let me open my, let me zoom out a little bit. So I took a second image here. This is the second image. 
And it's kind of neat because there was a plane flying over and I caught it and I didn't even, I wasn't even aware of it. It just when it hit the top of the flagpole. So we got a little geometry going on in here. But uh, so you can tell it's kind of like a Fisher Price type control. It really didn't do anything. If you can tell the, the first image is on standard. This was landscape with uh, uh, normal exposure and this is landscape darken. So I put it on darken hoping that it would darken a little bit and you can tell there's there's almost no difference in the images. Okay, So again I was a little surprised that there really wasn't any difference. Okay so let me show you here. You'll see, uh, let me come in a little bit tighter. Bear with me here. So you'll see here in, in the front of the division headquarters there's a, a long series of pergolas it's a pergola after pergola here so this is what I captured here I wanted to get the geometry All right so what I did is I it's kind of on a cant too and I was really I was very careful to make sure I composed it properly but you can tell there's there's a slight cant here in the final image and it's not centered so in the viewfinder also centered this and you can tell it's a little tighter here on the right than it is on the left and it comes with experience of course this is the only the third image I took with the camera so it's trial and error, but I was a little bit surprised that the image was crooked and it was not centered, even though in the viewfinder it was level and centered. So again, you got to eyeball it a little bit and play around and get to know the camera. The next image here is I went by the Sergeant, Sergeant's Major Academy. So in the Army, there's, there's only one Sergeant's Major Academy and it's here at Fort Bliss. So soldiers from all over the world in the rank of master sergeant or first sergeant if they want to get promoted to sergeant major they come here to fort bliss and go through this course and it's 10 months or a year it's a very long course but they come here in a student status and they reside here they're resident for about a year and they learn how to be a sergeant major okay so this is the the uh just the insignia and the flagpole and the whole campus it's out of view but the whole sergeant major campus the building is behind here it's just you can't you can't really see it. This is a uh, historic water tower on Bliss. Okay, so this tower, if you look at images going back to the late 1890s, early 1900s, you'll see this water tower in the images. So this water tower is over 100 years old. And again, it's just, it's kind of, it's really kind of neat when you look at the old images, the old black and white images when Fort Bliss was just nothing but tents. There really weren't any hard structures on the post it was just a series of a massive array a grid of tents but yet this this water tower was in the images and here she is a hundred years later and she's still going strong so there's the fort bliss water there are many water towers on bliss but that's the oldest one that's the historic one so this is uh this is the house it looks almost like a new orleans type house in the french quarter it's uh it's very hard to you know this this camera is you can tell here now what i'm getting dynamic range there's not a lot of dynamic range to this camera but I, I just i just enjoy it but this is the house that general pershing lived in the very famous general from he chased pancho via into mexico uh so this is general pershing's house and six doors down is this house so let me bring them try to bring them side by side here real quick so let me come out a little bit so this house if you walk out this front door and go down the street six six doors this is where Patton lived George Patton okay so he was already a general this is 1915 1916 so this is the centennial we're actually observing the centennial of when Pershing and Patton lived on Fort Bliss so six doors down lived a lieutenant he was only a lieutenant at the time in 1916 and he commanded the horseshoe school it's kind of funny that's what Patton did in 1916 he commanded the horseshoe school he was already a general and what happened is being neighbors, and this, you, you won't find the story, you know, it's kind of weird how Patton was kind of groomed. His, so he struck up a friendship. They were probably, you know, literally walking down the sidewalk and they struck up a conversation or something. And uh, Pershing asked him, how would you like to basically leave the horseshoe school and be my aide de camp? And Patton accepted and the, the rest is history. So we know he went from a first lieutenant here in 1915 to a general officer by the time World War II came around. Okay, so we have Pershing's house and General, uh, then Lieutenant Patton's house on Sheridan Avenue here in Fort Bliss. 
Okay, then we come to the chapel. I photographed a wedding here a few weeks ago. A sailor got married here, and the chaplain and I are best friends. I'm really, really close with the chaplain. So he said, hey, I'm going to marry this sailor. And his wife is, they're going to fly his wife and his, well, his bride-to-be, fiancé, from the state of Georgia. And he said, would you, you know, would you photograph it for me? And I said, sure, of course. So I photographed the wedding, and this is where it was held. This, is, this was built in 1924. It is beautiful on the inside. It is absolutely gorgeous, this church. So this is the, it's called Center Chapel, and it was completed in 1924. And all these are, again, these are just uh, standard mode, no flash, of course. It's just outdoor. This is, it's, uh, again, I was kind of surprised at the dynamic range. The mountains in the background, you can barely see. Let me come in a little bit tighter. So the, these are the McKinley Mountains in the, in the background. And this is the old 500 block of Fort Bliss. This was built during the Works Progress Administration when they were trying to put people to work when right, we were in the Great Depression. So a lot of these buildings were built in 34. And again, they, they did another huge project, I think, in 38 or 39. So it was in two phases, 34 and 1930, 1934, 1938, 39. But this whole historic 500 block was built during that time period. Okay, in this one, now I started experimenting a little bit more with the different, uh... Okay, so I was watching, uh, The Portrait of Dorian Gray. I'm going through the AFI Top 100, American Film Institute Top 100. And I'm trying to watch all the, the 100 movies. So anyways, I, I come up, now I'm on, uh, the, the, the picture of Dorian Gray. And so I just, I basically, there's a part when they show this, it's five seconds, because I can't pause it. Or the little pause bar will come in here. And I'm using Google Chromecast and the, the whole title obscures the top of the screen. So I was very fortunate for five seconds in the movie, they just show this for five consecutive seconds. So I wanted to test the bulb mode. So what I did is I, uh, obviously there's no flash and I didn't have it on macro. It's just a standard setting. So I exposed this for three seconds and the room was completely dark. There's no light coming in anywhere. All the lamps were off, the overhead lights, uh, the Venetian blinds were closed. So you can see here, there's a little, there's a little ambient leak from the Venetian blinds. Even though they're closed, there's a very slight leak, uh, of course, with, with blinds. It's not gonna be completely dark. But I exposed this for three seconds. And you can see here, it's actually a pretty decent exposure on the television set, but his face, right here, Dorian Gray, the character in the movie, Dorian, his face is kind of blown out. So again, we get back to dynamic range. It's a three second exposure. Everything actually looks pretty good, except for the face, it's overexposed. Here's a selfie I just took. So this is Flash, and I just looked at the, uh, they call it, a lot of people actually think this is a mirror, but it's not, I'll show you. This is the shutter button for the uh, when you're in portrait mode, right? But it's so shiny that people use this as a uh, as a mirror. They try to center themselves in this shutter button, and then they use the uh, this button here. Okay, they use this shutter button while they put themselves in this. They compose themselves in this shutter button, thinking it's a mirror. But again, it's I I can't fault people. So a lot of people are new to photography and they don't know what the different buttons are for. So it's not a big deal, but this is a selfie, and uh, I can't fault the camera because it, I'm as ugly as hell, and it actually captured my ugliness quite accurately. So I can't fault the camera for that. Okay, so the last images here. So these are, so these are some images I took. Let me show you here of some cartridges. Okay, so so let me show you the cartridges. I'll just show you here. I tried to capture these two cartridges. Let me zoom out a little bit here. So what I have here is this is a six. This one here on the left is a 6.5 Creedmoor, and this is 308 Winchester. Okay. So I have some long, long distance precision rifles, and these are two of the chamberings I have. So I wanted to experiment and see if how how well I could capture these two cartridges with the Instax. So this was the best one. This was in macro. So I placed the camera in macro and used the flash. Let me zoom in a little bit more. Okay, so that actually didn't turn out too bad. I thought, well, I can probably do better in bulb mode with no flash, right? Because I'm getting, you can see here, I'm getting some flash on the brass of the cartridge case. And I, want, I didn't want that glare. So I said, well, I'll just go to bulb. 
right? And then I won't get that glare on the brass and we'll be good to go. So that didn't work out too well. So I'll show you here what happened. So this is the first image. This is bulb, half second. Okay, you can tell it's very underexposed. You can't see anything. So that's a bulb, half second exposure in macro mode. Okay, so then I said, well, let me try uh, one second. Okay, still, and still in macro, bulb one second. It's a terrible image, okay? And I said, well, let me try two seconds. Then I tried two seconds, then I blew it out. So this is uh, not in macro, and it's two seconds, and it's overexposed. So let me come out here. And I'll put all of them side by side so you can see what bulb does again. Because if you you know I, I, if you want to experiment as a as a photographer, you want the Mini 90 because it has a lot more settings that the other lower entry models don't have. So again, so here's a macro with flash, bulb half second, bulb one second, bulb two seconds. So it's it's really kind of crazy to try to expose accurately in bulb. So again, the the best results were with macro and using the flash. Okay, so that's about it. Uh, if I shoot any more images with this Instax Mini, I'll try to, you know, if I, this was mostly outdoor today. If I, uh, if I do some more, I will make sure I make another video. I'll try to do some armament, right? Because people sometimes, you know, they like to see tanks and helicopters and aircraft and and so forth and so on, right? So if I get out and start doing some some uh, machinery, right? Some type of uh, ordinance, then I'll uh, I'll make another video. Thank you.